Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and I'm a full-time reseller on both eBay and Amazon. I've been on eBay over 15 years and I've been on Amazon over three. And this is my very first, my very first what sold video. Um, I know this is a super common staple of reseller YouTube. Like, let me grab the camera and be like, uh, let's go guys, let's see what's in the storage unit today and let me pick and pack and talk about it with you. Now, I don't have a storage unit or like a big garage that's just full of like really neatly numbered bins so I can like take you around and come pick the order orders. Um, I literally have three closets that I keep my inventory in around my house and I don't think that's quite as interesting. So I've pulled everything already and I've got it sitting on the couch next to me. And uh, we're gonna go over it and we're gonna see how much money I actually made this weekend. This weekend being Saturday and Sunday. Hopefully by watching this, you'll learn some new things to keep an eye out for and maybe even be encouraged to find a liquidator of your own to go find some profitable products at. Because not all of this stuff comes from the thrift. Some of it is from liquidation stores, which I love to use as a place to source for eBay. So anyway, without further yappity yap yap from me, let's get into the sales. Roll the intro. I want to get these out of the way first because they're really uh, taking up a lot of room and also they stink. So I'm really happy to get rid of them. I've got eight, eight boxes of hefty trash compactor bags. These are Bolo if you don't know. Uh, typically they can be found at hardware stores, not big hardware stores like Home Depot and Lowe's. We're talking like the mom and pop. Uh, true value, do it right, those sort of stores. Um, you might still be able to find them there. Typically, if you find the boxes in good condition, you can sell them on Amazon for about $25 per box. Now, these are not in good condition. I found them at a liquidator. They had a ton of them. They had a whole shelf of them, and I bought the whole shelf. This is the last eight uh, that I have left. But they are in absolutely terrible shape. They are smashed uh they have tape on them in some cases there are other ones where it's like it's been completely ruined and defaced so these could not go on amazon if you don't know you should not sell stuff in really poor condition on amazon they expect really nice new merchandise and they'll complain if you don't send them nice new merchandise so these went on ebay i purchased them for 250 a box and I was selling them in a two pack for $25. Like I said, you could sell one box in good condition on Amazon. On eBay, I had to sell two boxes for the same price. It just kind of is what it is. There's always a disparity between Amazon and eBay. I was selling them two for 25 and I also had a quantity discount where if you bought several two packs, you could get the price lowered. Earlier this week, I put a 20% off sale in my store on the stuff that is six months or older to try and like coax some of it out. Um, but I made a mistake. I included these, but what I didn't do was turn off the quantity discount. Instead of paying $24.99 for a two pack, they uh, went down to $19.99 for a two pack. And then stack on top of that the buy more, save more volume discount. So this person got each two pack for $15.99. So that's an incredible savings for them. Um, that's why they bought out my remaining stock, which I'm not upset about. Um, I'm happy they're gone. I'm, they stink. I have them in a tote by themselves because I don't want them stinking up anything else. So I'm happy to have these kind of out of here and I'm still profitable on them. I haven't actually added these up yet to see how much I make on them, which I'll have to do after I package and ship them obviously. So we'll find out together at the end of this video. We're just gonna kind of do like biggest item to smallest item. How about that? My next biggest item that sold, physically big too, not, not profit wise, is a Panasonic Omnivision VCR. These are my favorite, absolute favorite VCRs to pick up. I'll pick up any profitable VCR, but I will always pick up an Omnivision if it's priced right. I love these little guys. I call them Omnibay on my Instagram whenever I find one. They're super easy to spot because they almost always have this blue line on the front and they'll say Omnivision of some kind. Um, they're made by Panasonic and they're very popular. And you might be wondering why specifically Omnivisions? Why not like a JVC? Why not like a Sony? Something like that. I've told this story on my Instagram before what my theory is as to why Omnivisions specifically are so popular. My dad was an Omnivision guy. 
when um, he had to get VCRs for all the TVs in our house, he bought Omnivision, specifically Omnivision and nothing else. I'm pretty sure if he still has a VCR in, our, in my old house somewhere, it's gonna be an Omnivision. And I'm willing to bet there are other 60 to 70 year old dads out there with that same sort of loyalty to Panasonic. So when they have a house full of Omnivisions and one of them just craps out and stops working, where are you gonna go to get another one? Certainly not Best Buy. Uh, you're gonna have to go on eBay and get one shipped to you. And there is where I come in. I will provide them with those Omnivisions all day long. So I got this at my thrift for $5.50. My local thrift um, charges $5.50 across the board for all electronics. So VCRs, CD players, whatever, $5.50. So I get a lot of my Omnivisions there for $5.50. This one in particular though, gave me a problem because I listed it in a way that confused the boomers that normally buy this. Let me explain. This particular VCR is a bilingual unit. It comes with both English and Spanish menus. So when you first boot it up, you have to choose whether you want English or Spanish. Um, to me, that seemed like a selling point because there are probably plenty of Spanish speaking dads who might also want Panasonic VCRs. And knowing that they could get a nice Spanish menu, um, I felt like putting that in the title. So I put bilingual in the title. I originally listed this for $59.99. And for some reason, I couldn't sell it. I was so confused because normally my Omnivisions, I price them to move and they do move really quickly. Not this one though. So I marked it down after it had been sitting a while to $44.99, which is like a rock bottom price for a VCR. It still didn't sell. I was like, what is going on? Like, why hasn't this particular VCR sold? And I got a message recently that was asking like, what does bilingual mean? Like they were super confused by that term bilingual in the title. And I explained like, it doesn't speak in Spanish. It doesn't change the language of your video. It's just, you get a choice in the menus. Um, but that kind of went, sent the light bulb off that having bilingual in the title confused the buyer base who normally buys this VCR. They saw bilingual and it scared them away. So I took bilingual out of the title and it sold within a week. I probably should have marked it back up to $59.99 when I took bilingual out of the title, but I didn't. So I probably left money on the table with that mistake, but it's okay, it finally sold. I only paid $5.50. And just goes to show you that you really have to think about what market you're targeting. And sometimes if you target too many markets, those will compete with each other because for some reason, the word bilingual scared off the boomers that buy this VCR typically. So keep it simple, I guess. Next up in terms of size is these Sierra Mist uh, Soda Stream drink flavorings. So I bought these at a liquidator. Again, um, not the exact same liquidator I got the hefty bags from, but a similar one. They sell a lot more food and the food is typically expired or close to expiration. And these were no exception. They expire on 628 and I purchased them on like 612, 613, something like that. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna have a lot of time to like turn these before they expire, but they were only 50 cents a bottle. And I really wanted to try because Sierra Mist, if you don't know, is discontinued. So you can't buy Sierra Mist soda anymore. And I figured even if you don't have a soda stream, you can just open this and add it to sparkling water and voila, you've made your own Sierra Mist. So somebody who really wants Sierra Mist formula would probably like still buy this. So I paid 50 cents a bottle. That makes two bucks and I sold the lot for 25. And I'm grateful I did because I was able to get in and out before the expiration date stuck. And the expiration date on these is the same one as the rest of them on eBay. Nobody has a later date. So after 628, these basically aren't gonna be allowed to be sold on eBay anymore. I'm sure people will still try. People still try and sell expired stuff on eBay, but it can and will be taken down eventually. So yeah, not a big money sale, but like, you know, a fun sale that I couldn't pass up. This is probably the next biggest item in terms of size, even though everything from here on out is pretty small. This is a DVD that I found at the Goodwill. I don't normally sell a lot of DVDs, actually. I'm not like somebody that likes to sit there and dig through the DVDs. Just like I don't like to sit and dig through books. It's just not something that I like to do. But they had just brought out a fresh little push cart that was filled with nothing but DVDs. So I decided I was gonna take a look through it. I looked through and I saw some uh, interesting DVDs that I wanted to scan. This one caught my eye because it was a specific niche interest. Like it's not like a movie or anything. It's about the um, Can-Am Challenge Cup from like the 60s and 70s. 
So like a very niche kind of product. This can either be worth nothing or it can be worth a bunch of money. So I scanned it and I was surprised to see that it sells for 25 bucks in used condition. And I think the DVDs at that particular Goodwill were like two bucks a piece. So it was worth buying and picking up. I found a few other DVDs from that same rack. Some of them have sold and some of them have not. One of them was called Ms. 45. It's like a horror DVD, I guess. That one sold for $35, so that was another great find. I found some other weird uh, horror sci-fi films. That can be a great place to target as well. Um, really weird indie horror and stuff um, can sell really well on DVD. Also, complete series. I found a complete Sons of Anarchy Blu-ray set. It's the UK import version, but because Blu-rays are region free and it's still from an English um, speaking country, it'll sell just fine here. The problem is it was missing a disc, so I have to find a replacement for that. I also found some BBC shows on DVD um, and I was surprised at how well some of those sold as well. So like I said, complete series, niche hobbies, anime, sci-fi, horror, uh, that kind of stuff can be really good to like scan if you just want to like quickly scan through stuff. Next up we got another liquidation find. I have these Philips Norelco one blade uh, replacement blades. I found them at a liquidator. They normally charge $12.50 for each of these and you sell them for like $20. So that, that doesn't really make sense to me. That's not 100% ROI uh, item. So I waited until they had them half off and um, I bought them on a half off day, which was $6.25 a piece. $6.25 into $20 uh, is fine because these have crazy velocity. Anytime I find these at a liquidator or even at a thrift or a garage sale or something, and it's cheap enough, they sell super fast. I sold two to one person and then one to somebody else like literally within five minutes after it. The velocity on these is great if you can find them cheap enough. They do still exist in retail. They are not worth buying at retail price for flipping. They sell for less money than you can buy them for in the store. But do keep an eye on it in case it goes on clearance at the grocery stores that you see them at. We got yet another liquidation find. Um, these have a story attached because I kind of screwed up when I bought them. Uh, it has nothing to do with the fact that these have, uh, hopefully the camera will focus, please. Yes, thank you. A tear. Both of these boxes have a tear, like they were sliced open when somebody was box cutting the box open to get these out. So they couldn't go on Amazon. I originally purchased these at the liquidator to go on Amazon because when I scanned the UPC at the store, I was stunned to see that these boxes, which were $5 each, were selling for $30 each on Amazon. I was like, wow, that's gonna be a great ROI. Um, and they got like 20 of them. So I filled my cart with all of them. I paid $5 a piece. It wasn't even half off day, it was just $5 normally. I said, this is gonna be a great flip. It was not. The mistake is, when I got home and actually looked at the Amazon listing, when you scan it and look at the mobile listing, there's no indication that these are anything but a single pack. Because in the title, it doesn't say anything like pack of one, pack of two, anything like that. So you just scan it. And if you look at nothing else, you think the listing is for a single pack. The listing was actually supposed to be for a pack of 12. Because at one point, um, the keep it graph shows that it was selling for a lot more money. I was like, that's weird. And then when you look in the description, you see it's supposed to be a pack of 12. But everyone who is scanning this product in the store is making the mistake that it's a one pack and pricing it as it's a one pack for $30. And there are people in the, the listing, the buyers, complaining that it's supposed to be a pack of 12 and they only got one. So I was like, that's a problem. I cannot put these on this listing. So I got to looking to see what these are actually supposed to be worth as a single pack. And I found a more popular listing that is for the 1.7 ounce version of this product. This is only 0.5 ounces, so it's a lot smaller. That listing, you can get a 1.7 ounce on Amazon for less than $20 or right around $20. So why would anyone pay $30 for 0.5 ounces? Like the math does not math. The, the listing being for a 12 pack scared me away immediately. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. That's just going to lead to trouble. So seeing what I saw with the 1.7 ounces, I decided that I was not going to sell any of these on Amazon and I was just going to try and sell them on eBay. And the eBay prices were pretty okay. A lot of people were selling them in a two pack for $20 or $25. So I figured I'll just list these two on eBay for $25 and I did sell them 
So I, I spent 10 bucks and I sold them for 25, even though I was expecting $30 from one box. Thankfully, still profitable, still lucked my way into profit on that one. And I have a ton more of these. Um, so I'm gonna re-up the listing with pictures that aren't ripped and probably uh, bump the price of the listing a little more and see if I can get them cleared out. Um, like I said, I'm just thankful that I can at least sell them for 25. Then I've got a thrift find. I've got this Sony clip-on AM FM radio. It's not like a cassette player or anything. It's strictly just radio. Um, it came in a little bag at the thrift and it had the matching armband that goes with it. Um, a lot of the listings for this radio are for just the radio. There's like hundreds of listings for just this radio. So I was like, Ugh, do I really want to compete with that? At least I have the armband. That kind of sets it apart. Um, anytime I can find a feature that comes with it that sets it apart from everyone else's listing, I'm going to be like way more likely to buy it. So this was three bucks with the armband. Um, and I sold it for 25 and it went international. So I got to compete by having the armband and also having international shipping turned on. Um, if you don't, I don't know why you wouldn't. The, the eBay international shipping system is so easy. They do all of the work. You just ship it to a domestic warehouse. So turn on your international shipping. You never know what kind of stuff is gonna ship international. And in that case, having the armband and having international shipping turned on made this a quick sell for me, whereas there's hundreds of these listed and they didn't pick any of them, they picked me. So great little sale. Getting down to my last few items, I had um, one of my favorite type of items sell and that is a doll. Now I do have a ton of stuff out there on my YouTube about finding and selling profitable dolls. But I know you guys still struggle with dolls specifically. And I understand, dolls can be really hard and confusing, even with the knowledge that I'm trying to give out. So here's a really easy thing if you remember nothing else about dolls and you wanna know if a Barbie is valuable. Look for swap and styles dolls. Number one, they're always articulated. But that's not the easy part to look at. Look at her. She's got a line, and you know why that is? because she just comes apart. She's got a little button on her back. You can swap the styles. These dolls are from like 2010 to like 2013, 2014, I think. So they're still fairly common at the thrifts, at least in my uh, case, I find them fairly often. In nude condition, you can usually sell one for about 20 bucks. This one sold for less than that because I put her on a 20% off sale. And also, her arms just straight up don't work. So if you're gonna sell dolls, you do have to disclose in the listing if the joints are in good condition or not. So I said, nope, the arms are really bad, but her legs are good. So I sold her for about 15 bucks. I probably only paid a dollar, so that's a completely fine sale for me. And my camera is telling me that it's about to die. One second. All right, swap the new battery in. That's really annoying. I hate that I always have to take my camera off the tripod to change the battery so the background doesn't quite match up. It's annoying, but it is what it is. Anyway, my next item is this Nightmare Foxy Funko Pop. I got this in a thrift bag of Funko Pops for eight bucks. That bag was just amazing, okay? It had um, a bunch of Steven Universe Pops. I sold Steven and the Crystal Gems for like 30 or $40. There was a Peridot in there, which is worth a ton of money if you find it by itself but her glasses were broken off, so I only sold her for about 20 bucks, which is still really great for a broken pop. And then there was a Lapis Lazuli that I think I sold for 25 or 30, so that bag was amazing. Plus there were three Five Nights at Freddy's pops in there, which I sold for $15 a piece. This was the very last one I had, and it finally sold, again, for 15, bu 15 bucks. So the bag had already paid for itself many times over, so this is basically pure profit. Last but not least, I don't know anything about Nike shoes. I don't know anything about shoes in general, but I saw this in a bag of toys that I got at the thrift store for maybe like two or three bucks. And I looked up this specific shoe charm and it looked like it was selling for about 20 bucks. So I was like, cool. I can definitely make my money back on the bag and I don't even know what else is in it. So this came with like Nike shoes, right? Like maybe not modern Nike shoes, but like ones from the 2000s and earlier. But this one I think is newer because it does not have the little registered trademark symbol, which I saw on some of the older ones and I was like, 
does that mean this is fake? Like, was this faked or is this just not as old as the other ones? And I still don't really know, but it's, it's in really good condition. It doesn't look fake to me, um, but I sold this for 20 bucks. So that's pretty cool for not knowing anything about shoes and just figuring that it's probably worth something. So that was everything and now we're gonna go package it and add it up and look at all the fees and shipping and stuff and see how much money I actually made this weekend. I really don't know. I don't know yet. We're gonna go see. We're gonna find out together. If we add up everything, eBay gross sales were $316.25 and my net profit after all fees and shipping was only $134.31. Normally my profit margin is around 50%, so I fell short of that here. And my weekends are usually more profitable than this as well. It was a weekend full of mistakes and it's the summer, so I'm sourcing less overall too. That's the reality of full-time reselling. You have to take the big weekends with the small ones. And a lot of people don't like showing their small weekends, so I just wanted to keep it real with you. Keep generating sales and moving forward because that's all you can really do. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so because I release at least one video a month and it's all about my full-time reseller journey. You know, selling stuff on eBay, flipping stuff from the thrift, doing retail arbitrage for Amazon, all the good stuff. If you like this sort of what sold content and you want me to make more, let me know in the comments or if this is the kind of content you hate that the reseller YouTubers make and they just make it because it's quick and easy and they don't really care about what their audience wants. You know, I really want to know. I want your feedback. Let me know if what sold um, stuff is stuff you're interested in. Regardless, I put this kind of content on my Instagram stories. So if the majority of people hate it, it's still there. You can find it on my Instagram. Already subscribed? already following me on Instagram, thank you. You are my favorite kind of viewer. You are the best. So maybe leave me a like instead. Um, one like equals one telling the algorithm that Heather should get more views. Unless you want to keep me as your little hidden gem YouTuber and I guess dislike this video. I, I really don't care. You, get, you do what you gotta do. Now get out there, have fun, and find something good.